Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on Toned In Entertainment where we love pop culture. Today, it's time for another comic book review. Now, when we left off with issue number two of Geiger, we met single mom Carolina who found herself in quite the predicament and had to make the ultimate sacrifice to save her children. And while her children were on the run, they found themselves in an even crazier predicament, but thankfully, Geiger was there to save them. Plus, the King of Camelot, well, he's out for a little revenge on the glowing man that scarred his face. So how will all this play out? Well, let's get on with my comic book review for Geiger, issue number three. Now, also at the end of issue number two, we were teased three things that we were gonna learn here in this issue. The making of a monster, a hero defeated, and his secret revealed. And just like issue number two, we will once again get a little bit of backstory about Tyreek before the bombs drop as we see him trying out an experimental treatment to hopefully destroy the cancer cells in his body. But the main story will jump us right to where issue number two left off with Geiger coming to the rescue of Carolina's kids, Haley and Henry, who while are happy that Geiger saved them from the attack of the Nightcrawlers, are in disbelief that Geiger, other than having the ability to glow, appears to look just like a normal man. Now Geiger believes he's done his duty and he's ready to part ways with these youngsters, but Henry and Haley will plead with Geiger that they have nowhere to go after the death of their mother. Now at the end of issue two, we learn that the king suffered his hideous scar on his face at the hands of the glowy man. And here we're gonna find out just how that happened. We're going to see a few men making a dash into the shadows towards Geiger's base. Geiger will go on and investigate the strange noises, but when he does, he finds himself staring down the barrel of three guns, and then immediately he finds himself ducking and dodging bullets for his own survival. Now, after an explosion rocks this area, we will see one of the three things that we were teased, the hero defeated, as Geiger is in the clutches of the knights. Now there's one angry soldier here who seeks revenge for his missing teeth by the hands of Geiger, and he says, we're back to take everything you got. And then a voice can be heard saying, oh no, everything the monster has. And that's when it's revealed it's the King of Camelot, and he finishes his speech by saying, belongs to me, including his head. Now before we go any further, the King is alerted by one of his men that they just found an entire cache of weapons. And while the King is all about adding more to his arsenal, what he really wants is the head of Geiger as a trophy. Now the reoccurring theme here is that people really thought that Geiger was this big bad monster. And as the King takes a look at him, he believes that this must be some kind of joke. That the glowing man that's been knocking off his men looks nothing more than a mere mortal. Now as the King is ready to step up to the plate before he gets the opportunity to swing for the fences, one of his men alerts him about a bunker he just found. And while the king may have not really cared about the findings, the fact that Geiger yells out, stay away from there, spikes his highnesses, curiosity. And when the bunker is blown open, that's when we get the second of the three story elements we were teased, his secret revealed. As Geiger's hopes for having a family reunion one day with his wife and kids are blown to dust as nothing is left but dust and bones. And finally, we're gonna get the third story element we were teased, the making of a monster. We're in a flashback from even further back, we see Geiger having his vest equipped with radioactive rods where he's told he can now only remove them in case of an emergency. Now back in present day, the king has a good laugh at the expense of Geiger going through all the hassle of protecting a family that appears to have been dead for years. And this will be the trigger mechanism that will push Geiger to detonate the glowing man and have the king and all his men feel the wrath of the glowing man as Geiger believes he has nothing now since hope of his family being alive is all but dead. And it was on that night that the king was scarred and here in present day, revenge is certainly on his mind. Now what about Henry and Haley? Will Geiger take them under his wing? Well, it appears either Geiger's heart still pumps or just the fact it's the King's men that are after them will have Geiger playing the role of protector as they head on to what they hope is safety. Now on a scale of one to 10, I'm gonna give issue number three of Geiger an 8.5 out of 10. Once again, writer Jeff Johns pumps out another solid and compelling story, making us care not only about the main character Geiger, but almost equally the supporting cast in this crazy world. Plus thrown in here, the jaw dropping moment when we see Geiger realize what has happened to his family was extremely impactful. 
Now I do have a few small critiques for this issue. In the first two issues, there were little bonus materials that were included. However, here in issue number three, that was missing. And at the end of issue number two, we were introduced to Miss Borden, but she was completely absent here. But other than that, Geiger continues to be a great series and I'm excited. In issue number four, it appears we're about to meet a new cast of characters, the Organ People on July 7th. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap up my comic book review for Geiger issue number three. Now, what do you guys think about this series so far? Comment down below. And guys, if you like comic book reviews like this and all things pop culture, make sure you stay tuned in here to Toned In Entertainment for future videos. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. Go now. Do it now.